Praise God. Sunday school kids may be dismissed. Praise the Lord. Thank you. I'll save it for later. Yeah, just that's all right. Just drag it. Praise the Lord. That's what I usually do. Praise God. She'll be fine. She'll just be able to dunk with one arm. Turn my what on? Oh, thank you. See, I can't see that far anymore, so I've, and I don't hear that well, so she has to yell. Praise the Lord. Just kidding. That's all good. So hello to uh, everybody out there on live stream. We appreciate you participating in the service this morning, especially Darlene and Don, who we know are always out there with us, and we love you and appreciate it. And I uh, want to thank everybody for sharing this morning with your testimonies. Eric, I love you, brother. Yes. Hang in there, man. Yes. Praise the Lord. Rita, likewise. Yes. It's all good in yes. Jesus. Amen. Yes. Amen. And that goes for everybody. Praise yes. the Lord. We all got our stuff, you know, and God's going to help us, and we're going to be victorious yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. So, <laughs> praise God. I think I may have told you about this new reversible jacket I got. It's exciting. I can't wait to see how it turns out. Yeah. <laughs> I told you, I think, about my having been in banking. You know, I got, there was a couple of deals that went on there. One, uh, a lady asked me if I could show her her balance, and I shoved her and she fell over. <laughs> and that was just the beginning of the end of that career because, uh, I, like I say, banking's great, but I lost interest. So. Yeah. Amen. I've done a lot of weddings. I, I, I lost count. I think I keep a record of most of them. I just haven't gone back over them lately. But uh, I went to a really emotional wedding the other day, and even the cake was in tears. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Some of you may wonder, you know, I was in the military. You may wonder how I escaped Iraq. I ran. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. God's good. And I do appreciate all the testimonies because they do uh, testify to what the Lord has given me, uh, amen, to share with you this morning. So, uh, and you may pick up on this as we go along. But uh, I have several scriptures here to begin with just to kind of set things up. So, Suzanne, if you would, let's begin with Colossians chapter 1, verses 21 and 22. And I want to thank uh, Suzanne and Tammy for leading us in worship this morning. Thank you, Mike, as always, pushing all the buttons, and Eric back there doing his thing. Amen. Tweaking everything so I sound really good. Instead of like this, without, I really turn it back down. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But anyhow, it's all good in Jesus, and uh, I'm excited for what God has in store for us this year. Yeah. Amen. I believe because of the resistance we're seeing, something spectacular is yes. going to take place in the church this year, yes, and I believe. That for each and every one of us. Amen. So beginning here in Colossians 1, verses 21 and 22, here's what John, I, I was thinking when Don said, it's about us knowing who we are. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you something this morning. This, you know, this talk, talks, the scripture talks about God is holy. None is holy but God, right? Yeah. Only God is holy. Well, we are in him. Yes. And he's declaring us holy. And I know that's hard to kind of get our heads around when we know our normal, you know, human kind of way of behaving. But God has declared us holy in Christ. Yes. Amen. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. Yes. That's a mindset that we really have to grasp in order to move forward into the yes. things that God has for us. We've got to quit judging ourselves by our human yes. responses to things and start focusing on who we are in Christ. And that will change our response yes. to everything else around us. Amen. So he said, and you, that would be us, that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. That's how you are in the sight of God. Praise the Lord. All right, look at 1 Peter now, chapter 1, verses 15 and 16. 1 Peter 1, 15 through 16. But as he which hath called you is holy... So be ye holy in all manner of conversation. 
That would be saying what he says. Your conversation would always be holy if you speak what he speaks. Amen. Yeah. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Yeah. Praise God. All right. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 18 through 20. Hebrews 12, 18 through 20. Praise God. For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched and that burned with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest. The sound of a trumpet and the voice of words, which voice that they heard, they that heard, entreated that the word should not be spoken to them any more. For they could not endure that which was commanded, and if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. Praise the Lord. They said, let Moses yep. talk to him. He scares us. Too much for us. Let him talk to you, and then he can tell us. Amen. John chapter 15, or excuse me, John chapter 5, verse 19. John 5 and 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. And then chapter 12, verses 49 and 50. John 12, 49 and 50. Praise the Lord. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. Praise God. So sanctification is uh, to be dedicated or set apart or consecrated. Actually, it means holy. They all are synonymous terms with being holy. And so when the glory of God came down on Mount Sinai, which we just read and shook the mountain, Israel said, basically they said, please don't do that anymore. Yeah. Amen. We don't ever want to see that much revelation again. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's what they said, and that's what they got. Yes, Amen. Because just let Moses get the word and give it to us, and that'll be enough. Yes. See, here's part of that deal, too, and I may touch on it later. You all, we all have revelation, right? Some of it's communal, some of it's community revelation, some of it we all share. And then God gives us revelation in certain areas that you may have, Don, that I don't have. Now, you can tell me about it, but that don't make it mine, right? I have to have that. That revelation has to be personal. It has to be something that comes from God. That's what he's talking about when he said, and, and I'm praying until I hear a word from the Lord. That's a revelation that I didn't have, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, that's what Israel did to Moses. Yeah. They said, you get a revelation, and then you share it with us. Well, that's fine, but it's not the same. Because I can't live off of somebody else's. i got to have it. i got to know deep down inside of me that was God talking to me. And then it becomes revelation. And then you can't shake it loose from me. It's like salvation. The experience is more than anybody else's uh, uh, information that they might give you. Amen? It's not, but it isn't true. It's just not true for me until I have it personally. Amen? So, praise God. Then Jesus says, the idea of being holy or sanctified, it consists of, and this is what he's going into at the, at the end here that we read in the book of John, it consists, this holiness consists of hearing, seeing, and then responding. Amen? So that's the simple formula that Jesus spoke in the parable of the sower. Amen? The sower and the seed. Eric talked about it in Mark 4, and we'll touch on that too. But we all probably know the story because we've talked about it many, many times and you've heard sermons preached on it and you've read it, the stories and thought about it yourselves, I'm sure. But Jesus tells the story of a man who he scattered seed on different kinds of soil. And the conditions of the soil directly affected the way the seeds grew. Amen? Now, we know the seed is the Word of God. It starts out that way. Amen? He said it's like a man sows seed. He said the seed is the Word of God. Amen? And so look at this in Genesis 8, verse 22. And he tells us, God establishes this very early in the scriptures, amen, that some things just don't change. And God is one of them. And God's way of doing things do not change either, because if the things that he did change, then that would be a change in him. So he says, while the earth remaineth, as long as this stuff exists, seed time and harvest, 
In other words, as long as there's a planet, and he wasn't just talking natural things. We know that there's always a spiritual truth behind it. What he's saying is, as long as mankind, as long as this natural earth exists, this rule is going to prevail. And that is, what you say is what you're going to get, as well as what you plant is what you're going to get naturally. In the natural, you plant apple seeds, you get an apple tree, right? And in the spiritual, if you plant faith, if you plant uh, overcoming, if you plant healing, if you're sowing those things, that's the, the result that you're going to get. Amen? But just like what you plant, there's a process. There's some things you do and there's some things you don't do. And it's true in the spirit as well as, amen, in, in the natural. Amen? So while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. All right? Matthew chapter 13, verses 18 through 23. And this is where we get into the, uh, one of the scriptures that talks about the sowing of the seed and so forth. So he says, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. This is Jesus speaking. And he says, When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, get this, the word of the kingdom, that's this, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places... The same as he that heareth the word, and soon, or in time, with joy, receives it. Yet hath he not root in himself. So he gets it, but it, it isn't really established. He just, he hears it, and he goes, yeah, praise the Lord, like we all do in some services. But it never really becomes a part of us. So it's kind of like what we're talking about with Don. It's not revelation to me. It was revelation to the individual that was sharing it. But I haven't got it yet, right? So he, he hath not root in himself, but dureth for a while. So it works for a while. But as soon as problems come. As soon as an offense, as soon as something that challenges that word comes, yeah. amen, tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, and by and by he's offended or he's put off by it, right? He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. But he that received seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit. And bringeth forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Praise the Lord. So through this parable, Jesus is explaining to his disciples some things about the simplicity of being holy. He's trying to bring them up, amen, into the grace covenant, right? And the first point that he made was the sanctification or holiness is as simple as receiving a seed and not rejecting it. Right? So the analogy is that a seed is powerful. And it has within it... Within that seed is the ability to reproduce its parent. Praise the Lord. So the Word of God is a living thing. Yes. Right? And it has the ability to reproduce its parent. Yes. God's character, God's nature, God's likeness, God's power. Yes. Amen. So once the seed is received, it does all the work. Amen. All the soil has to do is remain receptive. Yes. Just can't push it back. It just can't ignore it or drive it off. Amen. So here's the deal. We have to refuse to define the Word of God in terms of some theological premise or some written statement. That becomes religion. It, 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 there's nothing personal about it. In other words, there's no revelation. It's just information. And that's what happens in religion is we, we get a word or we get a, a, a seed from the Lord but it's a theological kind of way of looking at things. Rather than being a personal thing, it's just, well, here's the rule. You know, here's what you do. Here's three steps to this or whatever it might be. Amen. And that doesn't work. Because this is, this is a living thing. It's not just a written word. It's not just some theology that was developed, amen, by some monk somewhere in a cave. This is the Word of God. This is a living epistle, he says. Praise the Lord. And so look, let's look at this in Hebrews chapter 4. And verse 12. Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of God is quick, or alive is another way of saying that. For the word of God is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now, you, could, you know that that's true because when you get a revelation of a word, 
it cuts right to the heart of the matter. Now, you may have thought it was this or that, for, read it for you know, many years, and so it's all happened to all of us. We've read the same scripture over and over, and then all of a sudden, bang. Yeah. It's like, whoo, where was that? And he says it's sharper than any two edges. This living word, when it comes alive to you personally, when it's not just some theology, when it's not just somebody else's, uh, you know, revelation or some written statement, you know, that you're b abiding by, it actually becomes personal. It becomes revelation, and then it pierces even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. It separates the flesh from the spirit. It's no longer dealing with your physical, mental kind of reception, but now it becomes a spiritual. Revelation, and you cannot lose it. It won't go away no matter what you do. Now, there are a lot of things I've learned over the years in school that I forgot. Yep. I forgot it. You know, I just don't even remember taking the class, to be quite honest with you. But the things that I have experienced, I haven't forgot. Good or bad, the things that I actually lived through, yes. they're still here. They're a part of me, and I, they'll never go anywhere. I'll, it'll always be a part of me. Amen? Yeah. So that's what he's talking about. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So it cuts right to the spirit. It's not, it isn't interested in what your theology is. It knows the way God can, you know, interact with us is by the Spirit. He knows when we got it and when we don't have it. Yeah. Right? So he's all about trying to get it to us in any way that he can. Amen. Praise yeah. the Lord. Okay, so John chapter 6, verse 63. So it doesn't make, you know, one person more spiritual or, you know, in fact, a lot of times it's because that one person has a greater need a greater obstacle, a greater battle against him that we, or she, fight for. God, give me an answer. I need to know how to move forward in it. And that, so that doesn't make me brighter than anybody else. It just makes my condition was so severe, I needed help. I needed a word from the Lord. Amen. And that's where we really get into this idea of God showing up when we have this need, when we really express that we know he's got the answer. I just got to believe that he'll give it to me. Amen. So it's the spirit that quickeneth, or it's the spirit that gives life. Amen? Not the flesh. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are not flesh words. They're not natural words. They are spirit, and they are life. Praise the Lord. So this, you can't separate this from God. Amen? All right, so then in James chapter 1, 18, in fact, let's go there just quick. I was going to skip over this, but let's go there. It, it's the word that caused us to be born again. This is the thing that made us born again. Yes. Not some ritual that we went through, and I'm not against any of that. I'm just saying that isn't what saved us. What saved us was we heard, yes. and we said, yes, I believe. Yes. Now, we might have responded to that in some way, coming to the altar or praying or doing wherever it was, where, whenever it was, and I'm not against any of that. I'm just saying... That was the thing that got you to the altar or that got you to that place was a word from God. Yep. Was something you believed and then you responded to that yep. however it was you did it. Amen. So he says, of his own will begat he us with the word of truth. In other words, God chose it's not his will that any should perish. So it's by his will that we were begotten or born again. Right. Yep. Amen. How? With the word of truth that we should be the, a kind of first fruits of his creatures. That's the same word that's used in Genesis when it talks about, uh, amen, the creation being the first fruits of what God had spoken. Yeah. Amen. And so we're, we're considered a part of this new creation, right? So, praise the Lord, he uses this planting analogy to show the continual reception of God's word of truth is, it will also save our thinking. Amen? Amen. It'll save, it'll save the feeling. Yeah. And it'll, it'll save your choosing. Yeah. Right? I mean, if, it, if you get a revelation, I'm not just talking about no, uh, hearing it. I'm saying when you really hunger after this, when you really yeah. believe it, this thing will not only save your soul. It, the, the, the word is actually sozo. It's kind of like shalom. It's everything. It's, all, it's peace. It's fullness. It's everything else. Amen. So, and, but it doesn't always happen at the same time for everybody. Some, it's a progressive thing. Yeah. The revelations we get. Now, you're born again as soon as you accept Christ and confess it with your mouth. You're born again. But there's so much more to that that many people haven't ever moved into simply because they haven't known how to get there or, or that there is another opportunity beyond just salvation thinking, okay, I got born again now. Everything's neat. Yeah. Everything's cool. Well, you haven't lived very long. Born again, then, if, if that's what you think. There's always going to be tribulation. There's always going to be obstacles. There's always going to be the enemy trying to come and steal 
anything that you've gotten from God. That's what he does. Amen. And so it'll save our thinking. It'll save our, our feelings. It'll save our choosing. Amen. Amen. Look at James 1, 21 through 25 now. This is after James tells us that we are born again by the word of God. And he says, wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Now he's talking about here. The soul is not your spirit. Your soul is your thinking, your intellect. The, that's what has to be born or, or renewed yeah. by the word of God. So he said, which is able to save your the way you think. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Mm -hmm. So again, what, what is it that we do? We do what we believe. Now we can think all kinds of stuff, but we're not necessarily going to do it because we don't necessarily believe it. We do what we believe. We end up acting out of what we have believed. And that's what, that's what James is talking about here. Amen? 25. But, okay, uh, for he beholdeth himself. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like unto a, mass behold, a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Now, we've gone over these scriptures many times, but there's a lot of different ways of looking at things that God's trying to show us. So, for if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Now, put this in the context of what I'm saying, of what I've led up to this point. So you're a hearer of the word, right? You've heard the word. You're in a church service, or you read it, or somebody else is sharing scripture with you, or whatever it might be. You're a hearer of the word. But it isn't really your word yet, right? Because he's already told us we act out of what we have embraced ourselves or what we have taken in and believed in not just what we've heard not just stuff that goes over us and past us but what we actually embrace so here's the struggle if you if you're a hearer of the word and you can even believe it but you just don't act on it because it's not that deep into you yet where it's become revelation right he's like a man that beholds his natural face in a glass so he sees his failure he sees or she sees all the weaknesses, all the flaws, and everything that we assume everybody else sees, right? Yeah. For he beholdeth himself. Mm -hmm. not, yeah. not what the word is saying, right. but what he sees. And he goes his way, and straightway he forgets what manner of man he was. So he forgets what God said, because he's so focused on him. Yeah. Or her. Yeah. I mean, this is what happens. And then we go away and we forget... Hey, I'm born again. Hey, I, I've got the power of God. I've got healing. This is like people that have heard about healing, and then somebody gets deathly sick, and they walk away and go, oh, my God, what are we going to do? The doctors say there's nothing, right? Yeah. So they forget yeah. what God has said about them, and they're only believing what they have experienced for themselves. So whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, but, so there's two ways of looking in this mirror, he says, or maybe there's two mirrors. But he said, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, that would be this, he being not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in what it is he's doing. Yeah. Because he believes in it. Yeah. Right? He's got faith. He's got revelation to act on. It's not just information. It's not just uh, intellectual knowledge of, but it's an experiential kind of thing. Mm -hmm. We're talking about revelation, right? Okay, so... The, the first issue is we have to receive the word. Think of it in terms of the soil even, because that's the parable that Jesus spoke and the analogy that he used. So the first issue is to receive the word and then internalize it. In other words, remember he said the heart ground, the scrabble ground, or whatever you want to call it, the end rows in a field where they, where they turn the tractors around when they're plowing and when they're, you know, yeah. they always get packed down. It always get because there's tires running over it all the time and it gets to where the seed there won't grow. That's what we were noticed it this year. They're going around now a lot of fields. I didn't notice this as a kid, but now that you see they'll go around, they're not plowing the whole field. They're just plowing the perimeter mm -hmm. where they were constantly turning and packing that ground down. So they plow that up. They leave the rest of it because it's already pretty much broken up, but they plow, they, they plow the outside area because it had become unreceptive to the seed. It's, it's hard, right? So he said, beholds himself. Now, so what happens is we're, we're talking about the, you receive the word, it has to be internalized. Otherwise, if it's just laying on the surface, the bird's coming to get it. The devil will get it. The devil steals that word that hasn't been internalized, that hasn't been put in the ground. If it isn't in the soil, then 
other critters will come along and eat it. Yeah. That's why you see the birds all over the fields and everything else. Yeah. Amen. So if, if and when it's received and internalized, God sees to it at that point that it's going to grow. Whatever that thing is, it's going to happen. Yeah. If you can get it into the ground yep. and keep it there, yep. it'll produce whatever it is. Yep. Amen. Just like corn will yep. produce corn, soybeans will produce soybeans, whatever it is, wheat, hay. This thing, if it's healing, if it gets into yes. you, if it's yes. internalized into you, it will produce yes. whatever that seed yes. is. It has to. Yes. That's the law that Jesus is using. Yes, is. Amen. And so, Mark chapter 4 and verse 25. And this goes to what Eric was talking about. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. And see, it's God that sees to it that that seed grows. Yep. Not the ground. You just got to get it in the ground and keep it in the ground. And that seed will produce automatically. That's just what it does. And that's what he's saying about God. If you get the word of God into you and not have it dug up or cast aside, it has to produce. It has to produce whatever that word is. Amen. For he that hath to him shall be given. And he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he hath. Now if that isn't a parallel to Israel saying, we don't want any more revelation, man. This is freaking us out. You just give us some religion. You just give us some words, amen, that he gave to you, and that'll be good enough because this is uncomfortable. It's too uncomfortable for us to deal with, right? That's exactly what's taking place, amen. He that hath to him shall be given, right? They had the word of God, what little there was at that point, but they had the experiences and everything else. And, and they said, no, this is too much. It's the thundering and all the other stuff that's going on. And we're frightened by it. You talk to him. Yeah. And so what happened? They lost what little they had. And I, how, how do I know that they did? Because it wasn't within a short period of time. They were making another god. They were creating idols. They were fornicating. They were, de they were not in belief. They did, and they were never in good and true belief after that. Amen. Until after the promised land. That's why they died out there in the wilderness. Yeah. They had rejected the revelation of God and had settled for some intellectual kind of way of looking at it. And that's why they never had any real strong belief. And every time something negative happened, they go, oh, my God, we're out here to die. That's what he brought yeah. us out here for. Yeah. Right? It's the same thing you're hearing today when people say, why did God take this person? Yeah. Why did God take that? Why did God let that happen? Yeah. You need a revelation, man. God is good. God's not doing any of this stuff. If it's happening, it's because that seed has been stolen and the enemy has to come in, amen, and devour the seed. Praise the Lord. Okay, praise God. So when revelation is received, more will be given. But when it's rejected, even what little you've had, it goes with it. it you'll begin to question that. That's exactly what the devil was trying to do to Don. Yeah. Well, what happened to Doak? Yeah. I don't know what happened to Doak. All I know is what the Word of God says. Yes, that's right. We'll know. In the meantime, I can't let that right. stop me from believing for the next thing. Right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, Jesus had his own uh, cousin die. Yeah. Right? And yet Lazarus was raised from the dead after being dead three days. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't understand it. All I know is the dead shall be raised. Yes, that's Amen. It. Praise God. That's it. So, remember, again, Israel, we don't want any more. And God says, okay, you won't get any more. Matthew 13, verses 20 through 22. How many of you think religion is complicated? Oh, my God, it's complicated. I mean, first of all, which one? I mean, you, you don't even know where to start. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So, he that receiveth seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and then in a little while, with joy, he receives it. Yet hath he no root, or not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises but because of the word, by and by, he's offended. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. 
So I'm just going to, I'll just ask you a rhetorical question. How complicated is sanctification? It's as complicated as receiving a word and refusing to allow it to be distorted by persecution. Jesus explained that, he said the sun, that hot thing up there. He said that scorched plants, the sun that scorched these plants, represents persecution. And then he said in another enemy that tries to stop the seed from producing is the enemy of complication. So you've got persecution and you've got complication or the choking thorns that crowded out the growing seed, right? The worries of the world, etc. Remember, Matthew 13, 19 says that this is the word of the kingdom, right? Matthew 6, verses 33 and 34. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall make, uh, take thought for its, the things of itself sufficient out of the day is the evil thereof. So he's telling us, seek first God's way of doing things. That's the other translation for that, God's way of doing things. And these things will be added to these things, whatever the things are that you need, whether it's healing, whether it's finances, whether it's relational, whatever it might be, they're added automatically if you stay focused on the kingdom, the word of the kingdom, amen, those things will be dealt with, right? So don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about what might happen tomorrow. How many of you think about tomorrow and worry, amen, what might happen here, what might happen there? I'm not bragging about it. I don't like to do it, but sometimes it happens, amen? And he's saying, but don't do that because tomorrow's going to happen and whatever happens, happens. Yeah. And you're not going to do anything about it today. No. You need to deal with it tomorrow when, that, yeah. when the issue comes up. How, are, will you have faith for whatever it is you need in that situation? <laughs> Take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Amen? So, another temptation here is scratching up the seed. Yeah. Amen? Sanctification is simple. But it's also mysterious. See, that's part of the problem as human beings. We want to understand everything. Yeah. And yet we, don't, we understand very little of the world that we live in. We're flipping switches and turning knobs and we have no clue where this is coming from and where it's going to and how it got here and any of that. But we know it works because it's been working. And all I've got to do is this. Yeah. And when it don't work, I'll get the professional to come and make it work again. Yeah. I don't need to know. I don't want to know, really. Right? And that's what happens here in, in religion or in the spirit realm. It's not just that it's digging it up or worrying about it, but it's also that we don't understand it in a natural way that we can just sit down and say, okay, here's three steps to perfection in life. It just doesn't work out that way. And so often we fall into the trap of second-guessing the process. Right? And I'm not picking on anybody because I've done this myself many, many times. I've had a sister die, a God-fearing woman that loved God and confessed and did the things that... And I, I'm thinking, what? What, 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 did, what did I do? Was it something I did? Was it something she did? Or was it something she didn't do? Was it this or was it that? We start second guessing. Yeah. Right? Because we don't understand the whole thing. Natu naturally or intellectually, it's something that has to be believed. Yeah. That's how it works. And the very fact that I'm trying to ra rationalize this thing and reason it out is probably evidence of why it doesn't work. <laughs> right? So Ma Mark chapter 4, 26 and 27. And he said, so is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring up and grow up. He doesn't know how. He just knows I plant the seed, leave it alone, and eventually it's going to produce. Yeah. Right? He goes to bed, he gets up, he goes to bed, he gets up, yeah. looks out there, still no seed, nothing, no fruit, but I know it's in the ground and I'm, you know, nothing's dug it up, it's still there. And so he just keeps going through the process of going to bed, getting up, just going through life believing that whatever was in the ground is going to produce. And sooner or later, he says, it will spring grow up. Yeah. He knoweth not how. In fact, it goes on to then say a great harvest. Yeah. Amen. And so this is the mystery of sanctification. Mm -hmm. The seed does the work. Mm -hmm. And the temptation is to be impatient because of religion tells us there's something you ought to be doing. I, I mean, surely it would have come up by now. How long does it take? Yeah. Right? So the temptation is to be impatient and then scratch it up. 
because it didn't produce on my schedule. So I'm going, is this, I wonder, is this right? Maybe I was the wrong one, you know? And we've actually undermined the thing that we're trying to do. We get into unbelief because we don't get the result that we want as soon as we want it. And we go, okay, well, this ain't working. What am I going to do now? No, it works. You just got to shut up and listen and wait. You just got to believe. If you're going to say something, say what he said about that. That seed's coming up, man. It, may not, it ain't up today, but it's coming up. It's got to come up. Healing's got to come. Deliverance has got to come. Prosperity has to come if I leave the seed in the ground. Praise the Lord. So I said... Uh, sanctification is as simple as hearing and receiving, yes. seeing and responding. Amen. So I talked some about hearing, but, but I want to look at seeing here for a little bit. So the purpose of the law is to reflect flaws, to reflect weaknesses, yep. right? The law itself. The law. Now, the law is not spiritual. He told us that. Nope. It's in here, but it's not spiritual in the sense of how it was given to, to begin with. It was a demand yep. that you live up to this Right? That's not spiritual because that's us if we are able to do it. Yep. But so the law is to reflect flaws. It's there to reflect weaknesses, yep. our inabilities, right? It's like a mirror. Yep. And when we look into it, we see our flaws, yep. right? We see ourselves for what we are. Yep. And we see that we're not much different than the Israelis or the Jews, amen, who did the same thing. Yep. So the ultimate purpose of the law is to compel people to turn to God. All right? It shows you all your mess. And the reason it does that is to get you to then turn to some yes. Savior that can yes. deliver you from that, right? And so the trouble is, it doesn't always work. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Why? Because too many people just try to make themselves look better. That's what religion does. Yes. It, it shows you your mess, and then it tells you, you can fix it. If you'll do this, if you'll stop going there, if you don't have one of them, if you dress like this, or if you do this, or if you do the other, or you don't do that, it, it, instead of seeing yourself for who you are and recognizing this is what God's trying to reveal to me, I'm a mess. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I'll turn to God. But instead of that, I try to fix myself up. I try to quit doing that. I try to stop doing this. And I, if I had the ability to do that on my own, I would have already done it. Right. Amen? So the trouble is it doesn't work. It, it, it forces us to become more religious yep. and guilt-ridden, yep. amen, and fearful than God intended. Amen? Right. So Jesus is like a mirror, too. He tells us this is the mirror of the Word of God. And so what he says is, remember, it's the Word of God. And he says, when you look into this mirror, we don't see our weaknesses. When we look into his mirror, we see his strength. Yeah. Right? And the amazing thing is that the more we look at his mirror, yes. the more we start to look like him. Yes. Not because of anything we're doing, no. but because of the seed yes. that I'm receiving. Amen. Yes. And just keep receiving. Even when I'm not doing the way the thing says, I just keep receiving it. Yes. That thing will change it me. Will. I can't change me. If I could, I would. That's what the law does. It forces you to God. Then when you come to the Word of God in faith, believing that this thing works, and if you'll trust it, you may fail, but the seed will continue to work. It will yes. produce. It has to produce after its own kind. Yes. Amen? Praise the Lord. So that's why it's important to focus on Jesus and the finished work. Amen? The glory of God. Not our failures, not our weaknesses, not our shortcomings. We have to stay focused on Jesus. He has told us, you are the righteousness of God, amen, in Christ, and nothing shall be impossible to you. You'll do everything he did, amen. But we got to do what he did. And what did he do? He only said what his father said. He only did what he saw his father do. And he's not, it's not like he's, Jesus is having an image and he's seeing the Father do this or the Father do... He had the Word of God. That's what he used, amen, to define God to himself. Yes. I know he was God in the flesh, but he operated as a human being. He had to do this thing this way. Otherwise, he, he being the first fruits, we could not have been a part of those first fruits. Right. Because you've got to do it the way he did it. The, the fruit has to be produced the same way. How, do, how, did this, how was the fruit of Jesus' ministry produced? By seeing what God said and doing it. By hearing what God said. Right? 
doing what God does, saying what God says. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. Because, so I mean, what happens so much with a, with a religious kind of mindset, then when we start talking about these things, they, all of a sudden now you've got a book coming out or some other thing going on, and it's giving you these steps to follow. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. This has to be personal. It has to be personal. And it doesn't, again, it's not a put down to somebody or an elevation to somebody else. It's just the process. It's how it works. It's the only way that it'll work. And it doesn't work for one and not work for the other. If the seed will get in the ground, the seed will produce. Yeah. And, it, and the ground is not the real issue here. The ground's all just ground. It's all just dirt. That's our flesh. That's our natural person. But I've got to get that seed past that into the spirit, and then it will produce. Yep. Some it takes longer than others. In some areas, it may take longer than in other areas. Yep. But the process is exactly the same. It's the word in my spirit. And eventually, if I don't dig it up, if I don't negate it or get offended because it hasn't happened as quickly as I wanted it to, it will produce. It has to produce. There's nothing else it can do. So, but we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. How, how, how does it happen? By beholding the glory of the Lord. Not the law, not your weakness, not your failures, not your flaws, but the glory of the Lord, as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, or seeing and seeing, amen, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Now that's, that's one of the most powerful scriptures outside of salvation itself in the Bible. We all, that's everybody, who will, with open face or with honesty, right? Beholding as in the glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, or from seeing to seeing, mm -hmm. even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Yes. Amen? So I want you to notice the delineation here of responsibility that's given. What is it we do? And what is it that God does? Mm -hmm. This is where religion mm -hmm. flips everything. Mm -hmm. We get to doing what God only can do, and expect God to do what we can do. Mm -hmm. Amen? So what is it we do? According to the Word of God, we do the beholding. And God does the transforming. Yes. We don't transform ourselves or anybody else. We just behold the glory of the Lord. We behold God yes. in His Word, and that's what changes us. Not us, God Himself. Yes. Amen? So to me, this scripture is like, uh, like one in Numbers. Numbers chapter 21, uh, verses 4 and 9. This is like a parallel Numbers 21, 4 through 9. And so they journeyed from Mount Hor. Now remember, we don't do anything except look. Right. All we do is behold. Right. So here's the parallel. And they journeyed from Mount Hor. God is setting us up for this all through the Old Testament. And he uses other symbols and ways of doing it. And this is one. They journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way or because of the journey. And the people spake unto God or against God and against Moses. Because we're having a hard time. There's, a, you know, there's, there's trouble. Yeah. It's a hard job. It's, it's difficult. We're struggling. And so where's God in all of this? You know, they, they start blaming God. Then they start blaming Moses. Amen. Because it hadn't happened the way they thought it would. And they're discouraged. And the people spake against God, spake against Moses. Wherefore, have you brought us up out to of G Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there's no bread, neither is there any water. And our soul loathes this light bread. They're, 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 they're not telling the truth. Right. It's not the water that I wanted where I wanted it. Maybe it's not the bread that I wanted where I wanted it. But it's the very thing that God has for you to sustain you, to get you to the place where you're in the promised land. Yes. Where, where now it's milk and honey, where everything flows, where God overcomes the enemy, where you don't have to plant to reap. Amen? So, therefore, the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned. So the Lord, and I back up here, and because of what I just said, the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and a lot of the people died. And therefore, the people came to Moses, the ones that hadn't died, and they said, we've sinned. We have spoken against the Lord, or in disagreement yeah. with the Lord, what the Lord had told us. Amen. 
For we have spoken against the Lord and against you because you're the one that told us what he said, which we ask you to do. And we pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, or looketh upon the serpent, the, the brass serpent, he shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it on a pole, and it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Now, that doesn't make any more sense rationally or intellectually than what we read in Colossians, right? Or, excuse me, in Corinthians. Huh? Look into the Word. That's all you got to do. Just look in the Word. And as you behold that, it will change you into His image. Or it will give you life. Divine life. Supernatural life. Spiritual life. Praise the Lord. So, neither one of these make any kind of sense in the natural. But God's trying to get us to see something here, and that is your natural mind's not going to get you to the, to the answers you're looking for. You're going to need divine help. Yes. Amen? I'm sure they had, they'd come up with different ways of trying to deal with the people that had been bitten by the serpents. Maybe even tried to figure out ways to avoid the serpents, yeah. but they were still getting bit and they were still dying. Yeah. So there was only one way to do it, and that was... I, I, I preached a sermon years and years ago. It was snake on a stick. It was about this very message, you know, the fairground kind of food. But it really was, I mean, it was, it was appropriate because that's exactly what we deal with. And this is when I was in an organization that was very into the what you do, amen, and how you do it. And that was one of the reasons why I ended up leaving the organization. But nevertheless, there shouldn't be any connection between a serpent on a pole and the chemical reaction in a person's body that's been bitten by a snake. There's no logical, scientific, medical reasonable explanation for that except that God said it and if you do it, it will work. He said, if you look, you live. Yes. Yeah. If you look, you'll live. Yes. Praise the Lord. And that's what we've got to start doing is looking yes. and living. Looking at the Word of God and letting that be the, the thing that delineates between what I do and what God does. What I do is I look Amen. And God does the rest. If I look and believe what I'm looking at, God will produce in me. Yes. Amen. Eternal life. Anything I need. Deliverance yes. from the serpent. Deliverance from death, hell, and the grave. Yes. Deliverance from poverty. Deliverance from the fear of what might come. And all the other stuff that the enemy tries to use against it. Yes. Now, is that too simple? <laughs> Amen. Yeah, kind of. I mean, that's... That, that offends the minds of people who want to understand how everything works. Yes. And that would be us. Yes. I know. We're curious. We're like, you know, we're always looking. And we're like the cat, you know. It kills them. It ends up being a destructive behavior. Praise the Lord. Are, are we going to forever live infected by the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And that's what this comes down to. We're still struggling with the same stuff. I got to know. I got to understand. I got to be able to explain. No, you got, what you got to do is believe. Yes. Adam didn't have to do anything other than just believe yes. and don't. Don't, don't do what I don't want you to do because it's not going to be good for you. But he didn't believe. And it's in a lot of ways, see, God didn't, God didn't, it's like, uh, you know, you hear this all the time, kids. Play, don't quit playing in the street, you're going to get hit by a car. And then they get hit by a car and we wonder why. Well, because they were playing in the street. No, maybe you should have just blistered their rear end. And yeah. that's what happens when you play in the street. Yeah. Right? No. Now, okay, so I'll be under arrest probably within the next 24 hours for that little <laughs> remark. But I'm saying there, ha there has to be correction yeah. for somebody who doesn't know better, yeah. right? Praise the Lord. But you don't want to be predicting and confessing and declaring crap that you don't want. So you take the initiative and you make the correction. And maybe they'll be angry with you for a little bit, but at least they'll still be here. They'll have time to get over it. Amen. And forgive you when they're 30. Praise the Lord. So instead of succumbing to the knowledge of the tree of good and evil, how about we muster a little courage and some boldness, and step out into the simplicity of Christ 
Amen. And just trust in Him. Let that, let that perception change our lives. Instead of us trying to change Him, let's focus on Him and let Him do the changing because He's the only one that can do it. If we'd really look to Jesus for everything, we'd not only see Jesus in that mirror, but ourselves in Jesus. Praise the Lord. Everything Jesus is has been given to us. That's, we are heirs. Yep. Joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We are equals as far as God's concerned. Yep. The only inequality is in our mind. Yep. That's right. Jesus said, follow me. Tim uses this all the time and it's so accurate. It's so true. To follow Jesus, what do you got to do? You got to look at Him. You have to keep your eye on Him because He could take a right turn and you're off looking around over here or whatever and you look up and where's Jesus? Yeah. Well, you're supposed to be following Him. Yeah. Right? Have you ever, have you ever been in a strange town and, and you meet a friend or a, somebody and they say, just follow me and we'll, yeah. we'll get to my place because you don't know the streets, you don't know, you know, I'm talking about before GPS and all that stuff, you don't know how to get, and they say, just follow me and then they take off 90 miles an hour because they know where they're going. Yeah. Yeah. And I have no idea. And I'm, oh, was it that street he turned on? No, you got to stay focused, yes. amen, to follow anybody. Yeah, you do. And that's what Jesus is talking about. Follow me. In other words, to follow me, you're going to have to keep your focus on me yeah. and not on the stuff that's going on around us. And that's what happens to us in life. We lose our focus on Jesus. And the next thing we know, we're dealing with some tragedy over here we're doing with some shortcoming over here with some lack up here or whatever and it gets us off of Jesus and the next thing we know where's where's Jesus yeah. well he's not in that mess and he's not in this mess he's right out here where he can deliver you from all of the mess yeah. if you just stay focused right. amen so if we keep our eyes on him then we will respond to things in the way that he responds to them. Amen? What we see him do is what we will do. Right? If we keep our focus here on him, then when the crap comes, mm -hmm. I know what he did. That's what I'm going to do. That's all Jesus was doing all the time he was on this earth. That's what my father does. Yep. That's what I'm going to do. Doesn't matter if it makes sense or not. I don't have to have a rational reason for doing it. If I've got a word from God, I'm just going to do it because that's what works. Praise the Lord. And so that's what Jesus did. What the Father said, I only say what He said. I'm only going to do what He did. You say, well, that's impossible. Not really. It's not that difficult. It's just because you're going you're, you're to get hit with this stuff all the time. We all do. Your response is, what did Jesus do? Not what would Jesus do. What did Jesus do? Yeah. Right? When death when sickness, yep. when a need for money. Yep. What did he do? He trusted God. Yep. He just believed, and then he spoke. Okay. Yep. And the result was he got whatever it was he needed. Praise the Lord. If we do what we see him do, and say what we hear him say, we'll experience what he experienced. Amen? And we'll have what he has. That's the word of God. It's not my interpretation. That's just a simple word that's what god says yep. amen that is sowing seed and it produces praise the lord the reason for responding isn't to get god to do something the reason we need to respond to what we see jesus do in the scripture is responding helps make what we see part of us again it's experiential rather than just intellectual if I see it, I can, ha I can experience it, then it becomes a, a part of me. Mm -hmm. It isn't something peripheral. It isn't something that's just going on around me or somebody else has testified to. It's my experience. And you yeah. can't take that away from no. me. And that's what he's trying to get us to understand. If you'll stay focused on me, amen, and what I say and what I do, you'll get the same results. Yes. Because God is not a, a man who should lie. Or he doesn't hold one person in higher esteem than another. If you do what he says to do, you'll get the results that he promises you'll get. And it's not based on you or your good works. That stuff will all eventually take care of itself. Right? But you've you got to leave the seed in the ground. 
You can't let the experience, the, the, the natural experience, steal the spiritual experience from you. Because the spiritual experience always over, overcomes or always outweighs the experience in the natural. If it didn't, there wouldn't be no such thing as healing. There wouldn't be any such thing as prosperity or any of the rest of it. Amen. It's always the lesser. The natural is always the lesser. Amen. That's why we see in the Old Testament it's a natural symbolism and so on and so forth. And that's why Jesus said we have a more sure word of prophecy. Yes. It's a better testimony. Amen. In the new covenant. Why? Because it's spiritual. Yeah. Yes. It will overcome those things. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. James said that uh, those who look but don't act tend to go away and forget what they saw. Praise the Lord. If you got a word and you don't act on that word, you might as well not have the word, right? Yeah. And that's how people get into complexity. Mm -hmm. Talked about persecution and complexity. And that's how we get into uh, complexity is by trying to figure everything out. Mm -hmm. We don't need to figure it all out. He's told us all we need to know for it to work. Yeah. But we still want to have an explanation why it took four days for this person and four years for this one. What difference does it make? It works. Yeah. It works. Right? We got, <laughs> I don't know, make a stretch here, but, you know, there's different growing seasons in different parts of the country. Mm -hmm. And some things, you know, grow quicker in some areas, and some it takes longer, and some have to be planted at different seasons. And, you know, think of watermelons and stuff that have to be harvested late in the year when it starts to cool down, pumpkins and things like that. Mm -hmm. You plant them in, you know, in May, they're, they're going to all be dead in June or July. They can't survive. There's, a, there's certain things that are planted at certain times yeah. and for certain ways. And that's why you have to use the Word of God. You can't just go out there and start throwing stuff up in the air. You say what He says. Yeah. Not, what, not what makes sense, but what He said. Amen? Yes. So you look into the perfect law of liberty and see the grace or the goodness of God. But because they don't act in response to that grace, they forget what they saw. All right, follow me. So I'm, I'm, I'm struggling, and I see in here that I am the righteousness of God in Christ, that His grace is sufficient, that He loves me with an everlasting love, that He'll never leave me or forsake me. Lo, I'm with you always to the end of the earth. You're my beloved in whom I'm well pleased. You're my child. I love you beyond your imagination. And I walk away from that, and all I'm thinking is, yeah, but you did this yesterday, and you got mad, and you said this, and you didn't do that. And what happens? I've forgotten yes. what I saw in the mirror. And now it's all about me again. And guess what? When it's all about me, I get the results that I produce. That's the bottom line, amen? They quickly forget what they saw. Then they get involved again, trying to accomplish their own sanctification, their own holiness, instead of relying on God to. Why? Because it's a mess, and i got to do something. I can't let this just go on. No, what you need to do is get back to the Word of God, yes. stay focused on that, and yes. trust Him, yes. because what you've done is dig up your seed, and now you're trying to make this thing happen yourself. Yes. And it's no wonder that life gets so complicated. That's the complexion that he's talking about when the seed doesn't stay in the ground like it's supposed to. It gets complex. Yep. And it gets complex in a hurry. Yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. It's complicated. And maybe that's what makes sanctification so hard. It's just too simple. <laughs> Seriously. We, we just can't accept. It's like grace. Yes. It's so good. It's too good. Yep. From a human perspective we, we, it's just you can't get your head around that's why it's got to be here it's got to be in your heart you've got to just trust you have to have faith to believe in grace you know what i'm saying it's by faith through grace or grace through faith yeah. that you're saved you can't separate them because it's too good yeah. to just be able to rationalize and say oh yeah okay i see that no, it's my God. I'm, and I've been working my tail off, failing and failing and failing. And here, all I had to do was just say, thank you, Jesus, and not give up. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That is right. 
It's simple as hearing the word of God and receiving it. Amen. It's as simple as seeing the image of God and responding to it. Last scripture, 2 Corinthians 11 and verse 3. Praise the Lord. It's the simplicity of Jesus. Religion has just so distorted this and perverted it. But he said, I fear, lest by any means. This is Paul. And he's talking to these people who had been born again, but now they're struggling with Judaism and they're struggling with all kinds of rules and stuff. And, and Paul said, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm worried about this. That by some way, the way that the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, through his lies and deception. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. That you'll let the complexness of your society or your personal life or your situations overcome the simplicity of beholding him and allowing that to make the change. Oh, but you don't know my problem. I don't need to know your problems. I got my own. And believe me, they're as bad or worse than yours. They're just not yours. That's the only reason they're not as bad. If we add anything more than that, we've moved out of New Testament sanctification and into tribulation and complexity. Religion and self-effort. Praise the Lord. Dead works. Instead of God working in us. And through us. Not us. It's him working through us. Amen. We're to do the works of God. And all that means is we're the means by which God does it. We're not doing it ourselves. We're just allowing him to do what he says right here. He ordained. The scripture says that he ordained before the foundation of the world. Amen. Talk about a destiny. Whoa, this thing goes way back. And it stretches out as far as it came from. Praise the Lord. By his word, living and abiding forever. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand this morning. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Just don't give up and keep saying what he says. Amen. And watch the complexity of life begin to just fade away. Praise the Lord. And you'll begin to see the fruit that God has promised in your life too. Every one of us. The promise is sure. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. I'm excited. God's got some powerful, powerful things that he's doing in this new year. Amen. In us, in this church. Amen. And I believe in plenty of churches, but I'm concerned about this one. And I do see it. And I'll tell you what. How you know is by the force that the enemy uses to come against you. Look at Jesus. Amen. The greater the battle, the, the more closer he got to the breakthrough of, of the death, burial, and resurrection. The resurrection especially. Amen. The more emphasis the devil put on him. The more crap that started coming from every corner, even with his, within his own circle. People say, well, you know, how, how, can, uh, how can somebody, how can you have somebody that's all screwed up, that's got issues? Jesus had him, and he knew it all along. He had, a, he had a thief and a liar. And I'm not saying that's anybody in here. I'm just saying he knew there were people in his inner circle that had, were struggling. They didn't understand. They were trying to do everything in the natural way. Did, why, didn't he, why didn't he just say, Judas, you're a devil. Take him out and get rid of him. Throw him away. Give him up. Do something. Just get him out of here. No. He just continued to work with Judas and work with Judas and let Judas live out his life. Yes. If you want to know the truth, I'll tell you what, you're going to see Judas in heaven right along with all the rest of the disciples. I believe that. I do. Jesus, I, he wasn't the devil. He just let the devil ma- yeah, manipulate him. He did. He did. I could be wrong, but I don't believe so. Based on what I know about Jesus, I'd say you'll see him just the same as you'll see Peter, John, and the rest of them. Oh, yeah. Amen. Everybody failed. Only difference between that is, okay, unless you believe in, uh, you know, suicide as being a, a, you know, eternal sin that you can't be forgiven of. I don't believe that. Personally, I think that's a religious teaching. People that commit suicide are crazy. You know, I mean, they're, they're not right. They're not thinking right. They're not getting the information that they need. And so they're responding to their life out of fear, out of stress, out of everything except God. Now, if they are a believer, 
I think they're still saved. Praise the Lord. We just need to keep the focus on Jesus and watch what he does. Amen. Get a revelation. Don't give the revelation up. Don't let anybody talk you out of that revelation. You keep confessing that revelation. You keep believing in what God has said, and it shall come to pass. It has no alternative. Amen. He just doesn't give us a timeline, and that's what we want. Right? I mean, we go to McDonald's. I've said it before. I don't go to McDonald's that often, but occasionally I do if I'm in a hurry. And I hate it. If there's three cars in front of me, I want to pull out of there and just act like an idiot. Honk my horn and say, hey, fast food, what happened? Huh? <laughs> right? I might as well be at, remember Millie's? <laughs> Down in university years ago. You could sit there for hours. While the girls come out to the car, you know, in the winter. And, you know, we, we didn't care. You're going to get a tenderloin. You're going to get a really big, good tenderloin eventually. You're just going to have to hang in here for a little bit. I didn't care because I didn't know there was anything other than that. And in fact, at that time, there wasn't. There wasn't any McDonald's. But I hate false advertising. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, I got it. Hey, come get it. And you know, there's something about the way they show it on the screen and the way that it tastes in real life. It's just a huge leap of faith there, too, isn't there? I mean, you see that quarter pound, and you go, man, that's... That's me. That's got my name written all over. And then you bite into it. And you go, ooh, God, that kind of tastes like Sally's leftovers from last week. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, I'm, now I'm rambling. Praise the Lord. God makes me feel good when I see what he's doing in our lives. Praise the Lord. Let's celebrate him. Let's keep the focus on him, and we'll get the results that he got. Amen. God bless you all. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Have a great week. Hopefully we'll see.